Hello and welcome to Virgily Delicious. So glad you're here. Today I'm doing a what I'm going to eat for one day for a total of $1.63. And this first part here is going to be really short, really brief, really fast. If you want to skip to the actual meal, just skip ahead two minutes. Totally understand. But I thought this would be a fun way to show you what I buy. And that way I don't have to show you what I buy at the store, plus go over the ingredients when I get home and all that jazz. I just thought this was kind of fun. It's a nice visual. So these are just the items that I'm picking up. Uh, I am going to be making three meals, a breakfast meal, which I don't usually make like breakfast. I usually eat some sort of pasta or something for breakfast. I know, I'm weird, whatever. <laughs> but I'm actually going to be using some rice for breakfast, eating a more traditional breakfast. And I've made this dish one other time, but a little bit differently. So it's always fun to experiment and try different things. I'm getting some powdered cheese. I love to use this in my budget meals. If you don't have powdered cheese available in bulk, you can just get a box of macaroni and cheese, the cheapest macaroni and cheese. The cheese is still gonna be good. And you can use the macaroni for something else and then the cheese for these or any meals you want. My favorite thing is to take the cheese powder and sprinkle it over top of hot popcorn. Oh, it is fabulous. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, some brown sugar. It's going to add a nice little sweet treat to one of the meals. Don't eat a lot. Uh, that might be a little too much, but it's okay. Rather error on the <laughs> too much side. Sorry, I filmed those lentils upside down because that's just what I do. <laughs> and those were French lentils. I've never seen French lentils. They were the only brown or green lentils, whatever you want to call them. The other ones were um, the red lentils, which were cheaper, and I don't know how that's even possible. But total of $1.63, let's do the first meal. Okay, so for breakfast, I'm going to be making a banana rice porridge. When you're eating on a budget, obviously, you probably aren't going to have all of the fancy schmancy things, but I do think that you can still make a meal delicious and slightly extraordinary just by changing or doing a few things differently. Normally you would use milk in making a rice porridge. Don't have milk, but we do have the powdered milk. So I'm going to be using that. If I didn't have the powdered milk, I would just do the water. And that's kind of where the banana comes in. If you don't have any milk and you have 25 cents, you can go get yourself a banana. That is about what a uh, banana goes for these days, or at least where I live. So with the majority of this banana, I am going to mash up. And then with this little piece here, I'm going to slice it and put it on the top just as kind of like a garnish and a nice little treat where you just have a nice whole piece of banana you can take a bite of. I kind of like that. It has a little a little difference to the meal, I think. So I've got my one piece of banana. That's probably about two thirds of the banana. I'm gonna cook this directly in the pan with my rice and all of the goodies. So just going to get this mashed up. If you wanna cook the rice until it's just about done and then put in a mashed banana, you can do it that way. But honestly, I think it's all gonna come out the same in the end. So might as well just get it all rolling at the same time. And that way the banana kind of breaks down and gets added to the flavor with the rice. And it also kind of helps the, the water become a little bit more creamy and sweet. It doesn't have to be liquefied, it just, just mash it up as best you can. So I have my rice and this is a 1 4th cup measuring cup and it is just about 1 4th cup. I'm going to go ahead and just add it in right now and then the water. I take three times the amount of the rice that I'm putting in there. So one fourth rice, I'm gonna put in three fourths cup water. You want this to be saucy. Get that heat turned on so I can get this to a boil. I'm gonna cover it, turn it on low and let it simmer until that rice is just tender. All right, let's give it a, give it a little look-ski. All right, just a little bit too thick for my liking. I am gonna have to add a little bit more water to that. 
Got another about one fourth cup water. I'm just gonna add that in there. Plus we need to add in the milk. So that's gonna need a little bit of liquid also. Let's get about a tablespoon of this powdered milk. We need some more for another meal. So definitely need to make sure we have some for that. Oh yeah, that took on a nice milky color. Sweet, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna add in some of this brown sugar. I think I bought uh, one tablespoon too much. <laughs> so it's about one tablespoon brown sugar. If you wanna use regular sugar, you can use regular sugar. You could use honey, you can use syrup. You can use maple syrup, a simple syrup, any kind of sweetener you want until it's as sweet as you want it. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And I'm gonna let this just rest here for about three to five minutes. It'll thicken up just a little bit more. The rice will soak up a little bit more of that liquid and it'll cool a little bit and it'll be ready to eat. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of brown sugar on the top because I do want it to be a little bit sweeter and also it'll give it a nice little color on the top. So it doesn't look like a big bowl of mush because that's exactly what it is, but it tastes delicious, okay? Don't knock the mush until you try it. That's what I say. And then put your nanas, put your nanas, nanas, put your nanas, 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 right there on top. All right, breakfast is a served. I'm gonna let y'all get a real close good gander of that. Better tell her she's pretty cause she is. All righty, enough of that. Let's get a bite of all of the things and give it an old rating. Here we go. The banana flavor is everywhere. I love rice. I just love it. And that brown sugar on top, I think it actually needs a little bit more brown sugar, but I'll, I'll hold my horses on that. This is really good. I like that the banana is everywhere. And then you get that little burst of banana, the extra burst, extra full flavored burst of banana as you get a whole piece of banana. Super good. I love you, banana. Oh, you delicious banana. For lunch, I am gonna need a tortilla. I have made these a lot on my channel. So I'm gonna spare the OGs this torture of watching me make it again. Super simple. I will leave a link below for a video I made on how to make tortillas for one. Super easy. They come out fluffy, soft, delicious. I promise you they're easy and you won't miss the store-bought at all. Very briefly, you'll just need flour, baking soda, some warm water, and oil and a little bit of salt if you want to put it in there that's it i'm gonna make that and have that ready for lunch in a few hours when i'm ready to eat okay so i got my tortilla made by the way the only on hand ingredient i used for these was oil i did buy flour and baking powder at the store so all i used from the house was the oil and the warm water I got that over on the pan still. I'm gonna turn the heat on and I need to get this super crisp. So it's obviously super soft right now. I'm turn back on the heat and I'm gonna try my best to dry this out as best as possible. All right, and then in this pot here, I have some water boiling. I have my lentils, my green lentils. I think they were French lentils is what they were called. Putting that in the water, all I need to do is soften those. It'll take about 30 minutes. You can use refried beans if you have that, but if I was to do refried beans in this, it would take me like four hours to make the refried beans. This is just gonna be another protein substitute. And no, they don't taste like beans, but they're gonna have a similar flavor, an earthy flavor to them. So I'm hoping they're going to taste pretty good on top of the nachos. Never had lentils on nachos. So let's do this together. And once these have fully cooked and are tender, I will drain off the water. All right. So I have a tomato. I'm actually going to use only a little bit for this meal. So I'm just going to cut off a little on each of the ends. 
And then this I'm going to save for dinner. And then the tomatoes, I'm just going to dice them up into little bite-sized pieces. And then over here, I have my jalapeno, which I de-seeded and rinsed. I'm going to put these into little slices. And I'm going to use some of this for lunch. And then the rest I'm going to use for dinner. And I don't think I said, but um, I'm making nachos. <laughs> I keep talking about putting things on top of chips. You're probably like, what is she talking about? I'm making my own homemade chips from this tortilla, which I've done in the past. And yeah, I'm going to make homemade nachos. Obvi, if uh, I had more money in the budget, I would just use some Taita chips and I would make my nachos from that. And on to the next thing for this meal is, is a cheese. So I have a good amount of cheese here. I'm just gonna add all of this to my bowl. And I got some milk left. I'm actually gonna be using this cheese for the next two meals. So lunch and dinner. I'm gonna put a little bit of the milk in here. I'm kind of hoping this is gonna just make it a little bit more creamy. So just, you know, water and cheese, it'll be milk powder, cheese and water. I have some hot water here. I don't know how much it's gonna take to thin this out, thicken it up and get it to where it's like a liquid cheese. So I'm just gonna slowly start adding some in. I don't know, about a tablespoon at a time or so. That is warm water, I did heat it up. All right, so that tortilla is crisp. Um, I probably should have rolled it into chip-like shapes before I did this, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just going with it. I'm just gonna break it into little chip-like pieces. And that's gonna be that. These are just at tender, which is good. I didn't want them to become like mush, but you could do that if you wanted to and make them more like a refried bean texture. But I'm gonna leave it like that. And all I gotta do now is build my nachos. My cheese is a nice consistency. I think um, I do need it a little bit thicker for my dinner. And I think once it goes in the refrigerator, it will thicken up a bit as cheese kind of does. All right, let's build those nachos. Nacho, nacho man. Okay, so I'm gonna spread those out, kind of, sort of like. Make sure we get a little toppings on all of the things. I sure hope this tastes good. <laughs> I'm gonna add some lentils here on top. It's kind of um green <laughs> for some nachos, so. I don't know, maybe this idea was better in my brain than on a plate, but I'm gonna put some cheese on top and I'm gonna save the rest for a din, din Get my tomatoes there drizzled over the top. And then a couple of those little pieces of chopped jalapeno. Okay, I'd be lying if I said, I'm not scared. I'm scared, okay. All right, okay. Okay, 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 all right. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. Okay, I know I keep saying that, but seriously, okay, here we go. That chip actually tastes really good. It has a very strong flour taste to it. Um, when I'm making the tortillas and eating those, they don't have that strong of a flour taste. I don't know if because all the moisture has been pulled out. Of it. I don't know, I don't know, but it's actually super flaky. Maybe I put too much uh, baking powder in there. I don't know, but it's almost cracker-like in its flavor and its light crispness. I need another bite of all this stuff on here to um, give an opinion. That ain't half bad. Um, I was actually really scared. That doesn't taste as bad as I would have thought it was going to after making it. Um, the lentils are very earthy tasting in here and it's quite noticeable with the cheese. Uh, more earthy than beans for sure. Let me give it another bite. 
surprisingly that jalapeno really balances out the flavor of the cheese with the lentils. I don't think I would ever eat this again. Is it terrible? Like, does it taste bad? No. I just don't like the lentils with the cheese with the chip. It's kind of a weird combo, but you know what? <laughs> All right, it's the end of the line for us, folks. And we are gonna make Bisquick cheese, tomato, and jalapeno sandwiches. Boom. I've never actually made a sandwich out of Bisquick mix, but I do love Bisquick and I like cheese. And tomato and cheese taste good together and I'm sure the jalapeno is gonna be good in there too. Now, I don't really have measurements here because I just bought some Bisquick. But I did go online and it said all you need is oil, water, and that's about it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in this, just like a teaspoon or so. I'm gonna totally eyeball this water. I'm gonna do not a lot at first, and then I'll add a little bit more. I'm looking for something that's kind of wet, but it's gonna hold its shape pretty well. I think that that is it. All right, I got a pan. I'm gonna cook these uh, biscuits on top of the stove instead of in the oven. Just gonna put a little bit of oil in the bottom. I don't want anything to stick. Get that spread around. The pan is currently cool. No heat going here. I was hoping to get two biscuits out of this. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I may have made it too runny. All right, there's one, can there be two? Try to make it a little round. I'm afraid these biscuits are gonna run together. If you have a Bisquick recipe, you could always just make your uh, bis biscuits out of that and then make it in the oven if you wanna do it that way. This is all just kind of an experiment at this point. Get that heat turned on to a medium low. I'm gonna cover that with a lid and I'm gonna let it cook. All right, let's take a peek. They actually plumped up quite a bit. You can see there, it rose up quite a bit. Let's give it a flip. Huh. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, let's get the other one. Go. Kind of messed up on the flip, but you know what? It's all on the wrist action and I just didn't have it today. They smell really good. Okay, I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna cook it. Um, I cooked it for about 10 minutes on the other side, so I'm gonna do the same. And once they're done, we'll move on. All right. They are a little bit crumbly, but Bisquick's kind of a crumbly uh, batter. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, cut these in half. I was thinking about just making a sandwich like this <laughs> and uh, putting stuff in the middle. Cause I, I think that's probably gonna go better, but let's just give it a shot with this one, huh? Woo! Oh boy. That actually worked out. Okay, okay, okay. Let's give it a taste. Tastes pretty good, actually. Has a good flavor. Has a nice little salty taste to it. Okay. It is a bit crumbly though, so um, that's unfortunate. But we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna build this sandwich. I got my cheese. I'm gonna put a little bit on all of the slices. All right, still got quite a bit of cheese left. There's probably about a tablespoon or so of that. Put some tomato slices. And then put some jalapenos. These actually weren't that spicy after taking out the seeds and washing them really good. All right, I'm gonna get my picture for my thumbnail and then I'm gonna give them a taste. Okay, the sandwiches are good. Give it a bite. It looks very colorful and pretty anyway. The tomato works really well with this um, Bisquick and that cheese. I knew I had a good feeling about this sandwich. That's actually really quite lovely. Um, lunch was a little bit light, but the rice for breakfast was super filling, so I really wasn't that hungry for lunch. 
but I am ready for dinner. And these two sandwiches are really going to hit the spot. Those jalapenos are a real nice burst of flavor. Not every bite has a jalapeno, but when it does, it's pretty tasty. I would definitely make these again. All right, I got one sandwich left. That was really good. Um, I would definitely say that I like breakfast the best, then dinner, and then lunch. I really liked the tortilla chips that um, were my <laughs> tortilla chips. Um, they kind of had this like really buttery, crispy, crackery taste. I was actually really happy with the way they tasted. I just didn't like everything together. That would have been the bomb had there actually been refried beans on there instead of the lentils. I think that's kind of where it all went wrong. I hope you enjoyed these three meal ideas. I hope they give you ideas. Hopefully you try them and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so very much. Happy eating, my friends.